Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we're gonna talk about the brush settings inside of Photoshop. So if you're interested in creating your own brushes or if you just wanna know what all of these different settings are, today's video is a basic Photoshop tutorial, but I just wanna make sure that I've got down the basics that can just refer you to this video. So that's the purpose for this today. It is a basic one, but it's important. So with that, let's get started. For this, we're just gonna be working with a basic default Photoshop brush, the hard round. And then we're gonna go into the brush settings. The brushes have two brushes here, and then the brush settings has one brush, and then it'll have some bullet points up in the corner. If you do not have brush settings here on the side panel, you can come up to window and make sure that brush settings is selected here. Also, you can press F5, and that's gonna bring up your brush settings as well. So either way, it should be here on the side panel. If it's not, then you can just bring it up through Windows up here at the top of the screen. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna do is click on Brush Tip Shape. You'll notice it doesn't have a little tick box here. Um, this is These are just the basic settings for this brush. And then you've got just basic settings, size of the brush, the brush angle of the brush roundness. So right now we've got something that looks like this. If we change the roundness of it, you bring it up or down, then it's gonna change it into this oval looking shape. And then also um, it, when I have it in that shape, I can also change the direction. You also have things here like hardness. So this is gonna turn a hard brush basically into a soft brush. And spacing is, you saw, we if we just click, we get the, the one little brush. This is the actual brush tip. When we add spacing, we're spacing out that brush. If you want a smoother flow, then you'll lessen the spacing. And if you want something more spread out, then you can increase the spacing. Okay, the next is shape dynamics. Shape dynamics, size jitter is just gonna vary the, the size of your brush tip. So I have that brush tip um, and it, it was one size and then it gets larger. And you can see as I click, the brush tip is changing because I've uh, changed the size jitter of that brush. And then a uh, minimum diameter of that jitter uh, just means that we're never gonna get something this small if uh, we bring it up to 60%. So we're only getting larger impressions of that brush tip. The angle jitter is kind of hard to tell with a round brush. Let me bring that, let me change the roundness of the brush so I can show you this. So if, you, if we have an angle jitter set really high, Every single time that brush tip goes down, the angle is going to change. So you're just varying the angle with the with angle jitter. And then uh, roundness jitter is going to change the the actual shape of the brush. So it's going to make it more or less round depending on how much jitter you put on it. So I'm going to bring it up really high to 75%. And you'll see how thin that one was, and then it gets thick, thin, and it's just gonna, it's gonna vary. In scattering, I have a basic round brush tip. So as I go, it's not gonna change at all. It's just gonna keep going. Uh, if I scatter the brush, it's gonna space it out in different directions, not just in the linear, uh, the way it did here, so, you know, you have the spacing of the brush. That is going to space it out in, a, I guess, a linear way. Scattering is just going to scatter this all over the place. So you'll have that brush tip, but it's just going to, it's going to be scattered all over the canvas. You can do this on both axes. So you have that. And you have it kind of closer together and you can spread it out as, as much as you like. You can also make that scatter even heavier. So right now we have a one count, and that's what that looks like. If we add more, 
it's just going to add more brush tips to each stroke. So you're getting a heavier flow of that single brush tip. And then the count jitter, just as with the other jitters, your count is just varying the amount of, of paint that's coming out. So sometimes it'll be less, sometimes it'll be more. And then of course you have these controls as well. So if you're working with a pen, a, a stylus, or um, uh, maybe an iPad or something, then you can use this. And then there are other, other variations of different tools that you can use. Okay, the next thing is texture. So with texture, you're adding a pattern or a variation on the brush. Right now you have, without texture, you have something very smooth. Uh, when you add texture to it, I'm going to add this uh, print. Uh, when you add a texture to it, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't work and you have to work with the settings in order to do this. For example, that didn't, that didn't do anything when I added that texture to it and I can add scale. It's still not going to do anything where the magic happens is right here, your texture, each tip, and you have to work with this. So right now we have height, which means that it'll give you an impression of it. Almost like if you had put something underneath a piece of paper and then colored over it with a crayon or something where you get that top bumpiness, that's all you're going to get with height. There are other things here that will work better. So subtract, for example, would work for something like this. I'm going to bring down that scale just so you can see what it is. So it's like a an animal print that's in there right now. And you can also work with the depth. So say you, you want this pattern, but you don't want it to show up so prominently in your in your brush, then you can bring down the depth of the brush uh, and you can work with depth jitter, which will vary the depth from strong to something more like this that's more subtle. Dual brushes is a similar concept to the texture here, except that instead of a texture, you're actually adding another brush to it. So I have my regular, well, let me turn that off for a minute. So I have my regular hard round brush. I'm going to turn on dual brushes and it's set to this brush right here. So it's going to give the texture of that brush and it's going to add it to this. And also here in dual brushes, you have mode. So you can change the mode to see if you get something that works better for you. Sometimes they don't make a difference and you just kind of have to go through them. And then of course here you can change uh, the size of the brush, the spacing, the scatter, and the count. And I can work with spacing to space that out a lot more. Um, I can scatter it out just as I would with a, with a regular brush. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is color dynamics. I'm going to turn that dual brush off. And right now I have my foreground color set to this kind of beige color. And I'm going to change the background color to that pink color. And I'm going to change the foreground background jitter. So I'm going to bring it up to 50%. So it's 50% background, 50% foreground color. I'm going to change the spacing so you can kind of see this a little bit better. And you can see uh, where it's kind of moving from here. It has both colors and it moves into that background color, but it still has some of this uh, foreground color in it and it just kind of varies and it goes through changing the color of the brush. You can uh, change the hue jitter which is going to give you variations of these two colors. So you're not going to just have that color. You'll have other colors. If you bring it lower, you're going to get closer and closer to those colors, but still have other color variations in there. The saturation jitter is uh, basically the same thing as hue jitter, except that you're just getting uh, different saturations of these two foreground background colors. So you're not getting color variations and uh, different hues. You're, you're just getting the same colors in a different saturation. Brightness jitter, same thing. So transfer and brush pose 
settings are mainly used if you're using a uh, tablet. It'll give you a lot of options for controlling the way the, the uh, ink flows from your pen. I don't have transfer set and I'm getting something like this. When I do set up transfer, you can see kind of the, the flow changes a little bit there. And this is just based on how much pressure I put on the tablet. The same thing for brush pose. If you're using a tablet with a pen, you can override how the ink flows from your pen using these. So adding noise to your brush is just going to give you a grainier effect. So we've started with this and we're going to add noise to it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is our original stroke here and then this is the stroke we created using noise. And you can see the rough edges that you get with this. Depending on the brush you're using, you'll get a, a much more dramatic effect from something like this. It's just adding a little bit of texture to your brush. And a wet edges is something that's really popular for watercolor. And this is an actual watercolor brush. So you can kind of get the idea there. You see how the outside has a much darker edge to it, which is uh, supposed to simulate a wet edge. You also have buildup. So buildup is actually just activating this airbrush uh, style buildup option up here in your brush panel. Smoothing is just making sure that you're not getting very rough, harsh angles. You can also uh, control smoothing up here. So if you have smoothing selected here in the brushes, uh, you can come up here and and adjust the amount of smoothing that you're going to get. So I'm going to draw a circle with without smoothing, and then I'm going to draw the I'm going to do the same thing with smoothing, and you'll see the difference in control that you get with uh, the smoothing. And the option uh, protect texture is just ensuring that you have the same uniform texture across all of your strokes. And that's pretty much it for the brush settings. I'm sure there's something that I've missed here. I didn't go through every single item in the brush settings. So if there's something that you had questions about that I did not cover, please leave your question for me in the comments and I'll make sure that I answer it as best I can. To learn more about working inside of Photoshop, check out one of the videos on the screen right now and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.